We're now going to look at when prior consistent statements can come in. So I'm going to share the screen and take us to the rule uh, in chart, of course. And there we have it, um, 801D1B. Now, when the witness's prior consistent statement can come in uh, is under the following circumstances. Uh, to rebut an express or implied charge, uh, the, the declarant, the witness, recently fabricated it or acted from a recent improper influence or motive in so testifying. All right, so now let's talk about the Duncan case in that context. So in Duncan, the, um, the witness um, says that, that, um, that Duncan called her and gave statements to her uh, or talked to her in a way that suggested he was involved with the murder. So the defense lawyer then cross-examines this witness and asks, so how many times did you talk to the police before? And did Duncan ever actually tell you that he committed the crime? And the, um, and the witness says no. So as a result of that, the, the prosecution offers the prior consistent stories where, where this witness called and reported to other people what Duncan had said when, when he called her. And it's much more damning than, than um, what she said when testifying. He said things that very clearly make it sound like that, um, that he was implicated in the murder. And, and those are the things that she, she called her friend after getting, getting off the phone with Duncan. She called her friends and, and you know, reported these statements that he just made. So can you bring the prior consistent stories in? Can you bring in what the witness at the time related to her friends? Well, the question then is, in Duncan, has the defense lawyer merely cross-examined the witness to show inconsistencies in the story, to show you know, failed memory, or is the basis of the cross-examination that, that the witness is now lying? We don't get into the timetable in this, this case. The only question we're asking is whether the cross-examination has crossed the line from saying, hey, you made inconsistent accounts to you must be lying. And the court says that, that the defense had crossed that line by saying, by saying, you know, you talked to the police on, a mul on multiple occasions and, and at no point uh, did Duncan ever actually tell you he was involved in the murder. This is absolutely a judgment call, but the Nebraska Supreme Court in Duncan says that's enough. So one of the things you want to evaluate when you decide whether the prior consistent statement comes in is whether the nature of the cross-examination goes to, to which of those three concerns about, about uh, testimony does, does the cross-examination go to? Does it go to show that the witness poorly perceived the event? Does it go to show that the witness poorly remembered the event? Um, or does it go to show that the witness is lying about the event? And, and if the cross-examination is, is, is implying that the witness is lying, uh, then, then we've at least satisfied one of the requirements for prior consistent statements to be admitted to rebut that charge. Now, in the Tome case that follows this, we'll be talking about timetable, and we'll ask whether, whether the, the prior consistent statement was offered before the motive to fabricate was developed. But what we learned from Duncan is that you have to show that a line has been crossed from cross-examination that's mere inconsistency that might suggest poor memory into a line, into the, into the world where the defense is now saying the witness is lying. That's one of the absolute requirements of, of offering prior consistent stories, statements that, that we have to show that, that the cross-examination is alleging fabrication. 